Athens, Ohio, off the banks of the Hocking at Ohio softball field. Ohio, the Bobcats host Ohio State, the school up in Columbus that you may or may not have heard of. The Bobcats, for the first time since 2016, welcome the scarlet and gray to Ohio softball field. Glad you're with us today, along with Cedric Granger. My name's Jay Cremata. A big contest here today, Cedric, because, I mean, the Buckeyes haven't been to Athens since 2016. That was a doubleheader day. Remember that one very well. Uh, the Buckeyes took those two contests 10 to 4 and also 1 to nothing. But um, this is the first meeting since 2019. They were supposed to meet in 2020, but COVID interrupted things. But uh, Ohio State also won that contest 4 to 3 up in Columbus. The Bobcats' last win against Ohio State was in 2018. The Bobcats shut out Ohio State up at Buckeye Field. And. Uh, First things first, Cedric, before we get to starting lineups and our pregame interview with with Ohio head coach Kenzie Roark, uh, your thoughts about today's contest? Yeah, so there's a lot of interesting things about these two teams. Obviously, with it being an in-state rivalry, it's always a big deal. This is their 72nd overall meeting with Ohio State leading the series 49-22 and having dominated the last 12, uh, leading that series 10-2. And there's some very dangerous players for both sides and some players trending in the right direction. Uh, for the Bobcats, uh, we got Caroline Spacek, Tori Walker, uh, Caitlin Foe, Yasmin Logan, and Megan McMenemy, who have all been on fire as of lately. They have grown, and they have done very well in their last three. They had a great Marshall game, had a great Buffalo series, and uh, they're looking to continue that momentum here into the Buckeye game right here. And then for the Bu Buckeyes, uh, they have some players that had some accolades, including uh, Sam Hockenbrock, who uh, Hackenbrock, apologize for that, Sam Hackenbrock, who is the Big Ten Player of the Week, as well as Cammie Quartercrack, who was the freshman of the week. So there are some talented players on both sides, which should make for a wonderful matchup here in Athens. Yeah, it'll be a, a, a fun one to say the least. And you alluded to Ohio's last series out. The Bobcats began Mid-American Conference play. They dropped two of three at Buffalo. And yeah, we say at Buffalo, but it was actually really at Canisius. Buffalo, uh, their field was just uh, in horrendous shape. So uh, both teams agreed, and also Canisius agreed. And uh, they were very awesome about uh, both programs using their facilities. But uh, the Bobcats lost two of three up there. Uh, Buffalo hit a walk-off home run in game one of the doubleheader on Friday. And uh, Buffalo also won on a walk-off fielder's choice in game two, four to three. And the Bobcats bounced back 10-2 to two in game three. And a good bounce back win, and you'll hear from Kenzie Roark, too. She was very uh, happy with the way her team finished, but uh, no spoilers there. Cedric, you did uh, Ohio's first game at OSF of this uh, 2022 campaign against Marshall. Um, Ohio, in a very good midweek non-conference win against the Thundering Herd, 8-7 to seven on, on a walk-off ground out to first base by Caitlin Fogue. That was really exciting, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just absolutely emphatic. It all kicked off with uh, Tory Walker hitting a home run, and at that point, the Bobcats were down 7-1, to one, so there was not really a lot of hope. It was pretty quiet uh, here at the stadium. Marshall, you could see them in their dugout all cheering. There was some dancing going on. They thought they had the game won, but the Bobcats kept fighting. They kept clawing, and they were able to become victorious. Uh, by a score of 8-7, to seven. and it was just a really exciting win, and seeing them being able to beat their rivals, I felt like it just really helped them to gain a lot of momentum going into MAC play, and uh, starting it off, it started off tough at Buffalo with uh, two losses, but they were able to at least win the last one about of that uh, series, and now they're looking to try to pull off another win over a rival team. I'd say there's a little bit of animosity between these two teams, and uh, you try to get another victory here at home. Cedric, where'd you spend your spring break? Uh, so I spent my spring break uh, here in Columbus. So Columbus oh. is my home. Uh, but then also I did a little bit of a post-spring break trip down to Greenville where I went to go see the March Madness game, well, got to see go. Duke, Cal State, Fullerton, and yeah. then uh, checked out amusement park down there, Jake. Well, I was just about to say, Ohio State spent their spring break in Tampa and a little bit of Orlando, Florida as well. I mean, this is the first time they're actually playing in the state of Ohio, they began their season uh, in Florida, came back, uh, they, they spent, I, I beg your pardon, their opening series was, it was down in Boca Raton, Florida, and then also they played five games in Leesburg, Florida as well, added four more games uh, to this campaign in Columbia, South Carolina, and they spent the last 10 games all their spring break in, in the Sunshine State in Tampa and Orlando, Florida, and uh, yeah, 11 days down in the Sunshine State sounds pretty good, and they are also successful as well uh, of those 10 games. They went 8-2, and two, so they're riding high coming into this one. They sure are. I mean, I'd have no complaints going down to Florida. That's about as great of a trip as you can ask for, and if you do a lot of winning there, that's all you got to make it a lot more fun. 
And uh, the Buckeyes, yeah, eight and two, two wins also over number 22, USF, nine to nothing and five to nothing. That is huge for this team. And uh, the Buckeyes were uh, very much ha happy. And why wouldn't you be? You beat a top 25 team twice, Cedric. That's what you want, especially starting uh, Big Ten play, which starts for them next week. Exactly. They actually took the place of uh, USF in the top 25 this past week thanks to those victories. So they're able to show that, hey, we're a really great team. We're competing for a Big Ten title. Uh, we're a team that you got to take seriously. And then now they find themselves back in their home state, and uh, they're going to get ready after this game to go take on IU uh, for the first time on their own home field and uh, one of the interesting talking points I had last week uh, with Chloe when talking about the Marshall series is that all these North teams we pretty much all have to go down south to play all their games so you're pretty much playing on the road 24-7 so it kind of can put some people on the back foot so to have an impressive record like Ohio State is really commendable and uh, really showcases their ability to win outside of the state of Ohio. Yeah we were talking with head coach Kelly Kovach Shanley uh, head coach of Ohio State about that Florida trip she was very pleased with everything and, and why wouldn't she be when her team hits 347 as a team in those 10 games with 31 extra base hits, including 13 home runs. And the pitching was just as fantastic as well. Uh, 1.86 ERA with 83 strikeouts and 16 to third innings of work. I mean, my goodness, Ohio State, they, they are a talented team. Fun one to look forward to today. Packed house as well at OSF. And uh, we'll, talk with, we'll talk about this one with head coach of the Bobcats, Kenzie Roark, and her thoughts of on in today's contest with the visiting Ohio State Buckeyes. Pre-game coverage continues on Bobcat TV as the Ohio Bobcats welcome in Ohio State. The Buckeyes at 17-5, and five, their first trip to Athens since 2016. And we're sitting down with Kenzie Roark, head coach for the Bobcats. And Kenzie, first things first, it's uh, probably, I know you guys have had already a home game under your belt, but I'm sure it's nice to uh, stay in Athens and sleep in your own beds and uh, just get those practice reps down at OSF. Yeah, it's a luxury um, at this point. You know, we've uh, we've been on the road a lot for the last few weeks, so being able to be at home and be in front of our home fans is exciting. Let's go back to uh, that first home game against Marshall. It was a thrilling victory for you all. I mean, we'll cover here, we'll cover uh, Buffalo here in a second too. But uh, take me through that game and what you all were feeling after that first game at OSF. Well, I mean, you know, we just we fought, and that was it was an exciting game to be a part of. Obviously, there were you know a lot of. Um, valleys and, and mountains in that game but you know just it was it was great at the end that took care of it and it was awesome to come away with a win in front of you know a, a crowd full of people buffalo uh you guys dropped two of three up at so you played at canisius uh, because buffalo is buffalo it's always buffalo but uh what were some of your main takeaways from that series uh up in uh i would say western new york but uh at canisius <laughs> Um, you know, we we ended the weekend on a high note. We played probably the most complete game that we've played um, all year. So pitching was firing, and obviously offense was firing. We hit four home runs that game, and defensively we made a lot of really good plays. So, um, you know, that's exciting. It feels like we were we left there on a good note. Um, so, you know, the thought is keep that going through the next, um, you know, the next little bit and, and keep firing on all cylinders. What is it about these midweek games, especially uh, against a team like Ohio State, why is it good for you all? Um, just exposure to, you know, other teams. And, and honestly, like, I mean, Ohio State, it's a it's an in-state, like, rivalry. You know, a bunch of the kids on this team grew up, um, you know, in this state. And so everybody knows the Ohio State name. Um, so it means a little more to them. It just does. What more can you all improve on uh, going into this game and also uh, your next MAC matchup against Bowling Green? I mean, Bowling Green's going to be tough. They've got a good pitching staff, and, um, you know, uh, the MAC right now is so even that it feels like, you know, anybody can really kind of take control and, um, you know, go in there and be contenders. So, you know, just playing our game every every time we step on the field and making sure that we're consistent and, um, you know, in all aspects, firing on all cylinders. When you see the Buckeyes, what do you see on film? What makes them uh, a good team? They're 17-5. and five. Uh, I mean, they've they've got good pitching. Um, you know, they're not not giving up a ton of runs, and and they can they can hit a little bit. So you know, it's two of the two of the three things that you really <laughs> really need in order to be a successful program. And you know, they've they've gone and played some some good competition too. So it'll be good. Who's hot for you right now? Um, jeez, it. We have a, I mean, we have a few people. We honestly, we've had some kids who have come off the bench and um, had opportunities either due to you know, injury or just trying to make some changes and, you know, our outfield right now, we've got, we've got some kids, we got like five kids who are trying to get in the lineup, which is a great problem for me. Um, you know, 
worse whenever you can't figure out who you need to put in the lineup because <laughs> they're not uh, not doing what you need them to. It's it's good that, it's good that they're making it hard on me though. Kenzie, thanks for your time. Good luck. Warehouse Tire in Athens is your locally owned and operated auto and truck tire center. At Warehouse Tire, we focus on customer service with a professional staff and a huge inventory of wheels and tires for a variety of applications, including farm and industrial. We feature top brands, including Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal. Warehouse Tire is also a full-service auto service shop. Let us help with all of your under-vehicle maintenance, including brakes, shocks, struts, and alignments. Visit Warehouse Tire on Hebbardsville Road in Athens or online at warehousetireinc.com. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Ohio University Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. And we're back in Ohio softball field for this clash between the Ohio Bobcats and Ohio State Buckeyes. Along with Cedric Granger, my name's Jay Kamada. You just heard the thoughts of Kenzie Roark, head coach of the Ohio Bobcats. And uh, yeah, she was right that today will be a tough task against the 17 and five Ohio State Buckeyes who uh, recently got some votes uh, to be in the top 25. Taking a look at this now, it's the uh, extra inning softball poll. They came in at number 23. And uh, these Buckeyes will bat first, and we'll go through their starting nine offensively with J.C. Rubetti out in left field. She hits first. Maggie Adi bats second for these Buckeyes. Number 24, Sam Hackenbrock. She hits uh, 377. She'll be in that third spot. Hitting cleanup and also playing first base is Nikki Carver for the Bucks. Also Mackenzie Bump, the third baseman, hitting fifth. Cami Quartercracks, she was the uh, Big Ten Freshman of the Week after a fantastic spring break. The shortstop comes into the sixth spot. Taylor Pack, she's behind the dish today for Ohio State. She hits seventh with Mariah Rodriguez and Melina Wilkinson rounding out Ohio's offensive nine. For Ohio, defensively, this is what things look like. Carolyn, Spot or Carolyn Spotchek's at first base and second base, Lauren Juhas. And the hot corner at third base is Analia Paoli at shortstop, Megan McMenemy, the uh, former Buckeye herself. In left field, Ohio looks like this. Caitlin Fogue with uh, Logan and Walker in center and in right field. First pitch today is skied out to center field. And Logan, speaking of her, she's under it to make the catch. And we're underway at Ohio softball field off the banks of the Hawking. Ohio and Ohio State colliding for the first time since 2019. And it's Ohio State's first trip to Athens since 2016. We begin with one pitch, one out for the visiting Bucks, and Mackenzie Cole inside the circle for Ohio. First pitch to Maggie, Maggie Adi is in there for a called strike, and nothing in one to start. It's interesting that this game started almost exactly like how the USF game started with the fly out, but the Buckeyes showed that they're coming out swinging. Mackenzie Cole, a right-hander, deals the next pitch, swung on and missed, nothing in two. Kenzie Cole this year, 5-7. and seven. This is her 14th appearance and 14th start. Carries a 4-7-6 ERA coming into today with 75 innings of work. Opponents hit 294 against her. She's allowed 88 hits, 55 runs, 51 of them earned. Next pitch checked at, and Adi does not go around, so the ball, so it's a ball, and it's 1-2. and two. Wow, I cannot believe how many people have crammed in the, into OSF here today. I mean, even... There's standing room in the very last row of the bleachers for those in attendance. Shoulder to shoulder, mix of scarlet, mix of green. Christmas in March here in Athens. I should say Christmas colors as the next pitch fouled off. One and two, the, the count still to Maggie Adi. Go on, Lion Jake. It's just really impressive seeing all the people that came out, and they're even doing a promo today where anybody who has Ohio State gear can trade it out for Ohio gear if they want. Well, there is a lot of Ohio State gear worn on campus here in Athens, and it makes some people sick. Here's the next pitch. It finishes high, 2-2. Two and two. Mackenzie Cole, 5'7", senior from Corona Del Mar, California. It's her signal from the third base dugout as Ohio in their home whites and green sleeves. The 2-2 is again fouled back above the screen and out of play. Count stays 2-2. Two two. 
cool. One of the other things that I notice about the Buckeyes is that they always do a great job of staying alive in the count. So even when it seems like they have their backs against the wall a little bit, they continue to just get a lot of pitches uh, from the uh, opposing team's pitchers in the circle. Cole, a righty against Adi, the lefty. Here's the 2-2. Another foul back, and Adi's really making Cole work for this one. 257 hitter is the two-spot hitter today for the Bucks. 19 hits. She's gone yard three times. And has 21 ribbies. Buckeyes in their gray jerseys with Ohio State in scarlet across the front, outlined by white. Really cool scarlet helmets as well. The 2-2 low and away, and Adi's worked a full count. One down, nobody on for Ohio State in the early portions of today's game at OSF. Gorgeous day in Southeast Ohio. We were told it was raining in Columbus. It's a gorgeous day down here. We're packed to the brink here at OSF. The 3-2 lined out to left field, charging Fogue down the line, it's foul. And this has become a very interesting 1v1 between Cole and Ohio State's Megiotti. I think we'll be seeing a lot of that, Jake, as well. There's a lot of dangerous hitters on this Buckeye team, so Cole definitely has her work cut out for her at the circle. Uh, but I feel like she's up to the challenge, so we'll see what goes down at this at-bat. Adi, 5'9", senior from East Sparta, Ohio. East Sparta, Ohio, just south of uh, Canton, about 16 minutes. Ground ball knocked on the ground, first base side. Foul. Still three and two the count. And I don't know for sure, but I will say this. I mean, this has been at least a 10 pitch at bat for Megiotti. That's something too that Ohio State, we were uh, talking to Coach Shanley about. I mean, she's very impressed by her team's pitch selection. The next pitch, upstairs for ball four and Ohio State's worth a walk. But just being disciplined at the, at the plate, Cedric, and uh, that's something we talked about with her earlier today. Exactly, and uh, on that one right there, Cole tried to give the rise ball, but it seemed like it was just a little bit out of the strike zone. Her goal is trying to work those corners uh, on these pitches to try to get them swinging, uh, but that time it didn't work out for her, and that's why she gave up the uh, walk right there. Sam Hackenbrock in the, at the uh, plate now for Ohio State. Takes a first pitch inside, ball one. And this is a DP that hits 377 this season. 23 hits, seven long balls. 21 RBIs as well, along with uh, her runner on first base, Megiotti. Next pitch, upstairs and high. Hits the edge, strike one. Yeah, one just, oh, go ahead. Sorry, my bad about that, Jay. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just about to say, 5'6 uh, junior from Maslin, Ohio. Brings uh, a six-game hit streak into today. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Off-speed pitch in there for a strike. It's one and two. One ball, two strikes, a runner on for Ohio State. No score, top half of the first. Glad you're with us today and a uh, fantastic day for softball. The one, two, swung on and missed. Cole got her with an off speed inside. And there are two down now for Ohio State on Mackenzie Cole's first strikeout today. Yeah, Hockenbrock came in as the Big Ten Co-Player of the Week, and she's been really dangerous. She had six home runs just last week alone. Uh, so Cole winning that exchange right there was a big play, but still, still got a couple of potent hitters on the way for the Buckeyes. Nikki Carver, the cleanup hitter for Ohio State today. First pitch to her is knocked on the ground. Foul, third base side. And Carver begins the count 0-1. 296 hitter this year, Carver. 16 hits, four, uh, four home runs, and 12 RBIs. Runner on first for Ohio State. Still no score, top of the first. And two gone in this inning. The pitch upstairs, ball one. Righty on righty matchup as Carver steps in, or she is at the plate rather. 5'8 senior from Gainesville, Georgia. She solo homered in three straight games over spring break against Army, UMass, and USF. So big bat at the plate. The 1-1. And their first strike outside corner. Looked like an off-speed pitch from the hand of Mackenzie Cole. So Carver down to her last strike in this uh, top portion of the first. Cole gets her sign. She rocks and fires the 1-2. 
Floated down the left field line, curling foul, and it lands. Still one and two. Very similar, similar situation to the Marshall game. Um, throughout the first at bat, Cole was going against Marshall, and on their third batter, they were able to hit a home run. Uh, so Cole's going to try to do a better job here of being able to get out of the inning. Righty on a righty matchup as well. One and two to Carver. Here it comes from Cole. Swung on and lifted high, lifted deep to left center field. Fogas under it at the track, leaps and makes the catch. And Ohio State leaves one stranded on first base after a walk by Mackenzie Cole. The Bobcats grab the bats when we come back at a packed house at OSF. This is the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. Located on 741 East State Street, Steak and Shake is serving up handmade milkshakes, fresh pressed steak burgers, and crispy shoestring fries cooked right to order. Kick off your day with our breakfast served until 11 a.m. And don't forget to join us for happy hour drinks and shakes on weekdays from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. Left corner for three, bang! And oh baby, what a first half it's been. In sight, it must be right. We'll see you there at Steak and Shake Athens. If you can dream it, you can do it. Maybe your dream is to have a vacation cabin in the woods. Or maybe your dream is to open up a cat cafe. Uh, who ordered the milk? At Ohio University Credit Union, your dreams are our dreams, and we have the money to lend that will make them a reality. OUCU offers great loan rates, flexible terms, and fast responses on your application. Not a member? You can join. Really, stop by a branch or visit OUCU.org. Equal housing opportunity, loan subject to credit approval, federally insured by NCUA, MLS number 433809. No score after the top half of the first inning. Buckeyes leave one stranded. And Mackenzie Cole off to a uh, decent start here in Athens. We go through Ohio starting nine. And due up this inning, Carolyn Spachek, the first baseman hitting 310 this year, followed by Megan McMenemy, the former Buckeye. Get into that here more in a moment. Analia Paoli hits third for Ohio, followed by the DP, Sophia Bernard. Caitlin Fogue is hitting fifth for Ohio. Tori Walker in that sixth spot, and the experienced senior behind the dish, Brooke Rice, is batting seventh, along with Yasmin Logan in, uh, in the eighth spot, and Lauren Juhas rounding out Ohio's nine. Defensively, Ohio State looks like this. Carver at first, Rodriguez at second. Corda cracks at short, the freshman, who has a uh, fantastic glove. Bump in the hot corner at third base. Roberti in left, Adi in center, Wilkerson in right, and Pack behind the dish. Allison Smith in the circle for Ohio State. Her first pitch of the day is in there for a called strike, strike against Spachek. And Smith carries a 2-1-7 uh, ERA. She's 5-2 this year, making her ninth appearance. Opponents hit 231 against Allison Smith this season. The 0-1 pitch, swung on and missed. Spachek chased a rise ball upstairs and uh, is down in the count 0-2. Here's the 0-2, swing and a miss. Three pitches, three strikes, one down for Ohio State. And Allison Smith has registered her 44th strikeout this season. Yeah, this pitching staff is absolutely no joke for the Buckeyes as they have multiple players with five wins on the season, including Emily Ruck as well as Lexi Hanley to go along with Allison Smith, showing just how dangerous their depth is. Megan McMenemy taking the pitch from her former teammate, former Buckeye Allison Smith. She checked at it. However, did not go around after it checked down the third base line. So it's 1-0 for McMenemy. 3-10 hitter this year. 18 hits for Ohio. As the lefty's ready, here's a pitch from Smith. Swung through and missed. 1-1 one, one the count, one down and nobody on for Ohio. And a scoreless ball game in Athens. McMenemy the fifth year out of Westerville, Ohio. Her Ohio State Buckeyes really do miss her, we were told today by her uh, former teammates when we went, to, went down and introduced ourselves. 
Yeah, it's really great to be able to see players that when they transfer, they transfer on good terms because sometimes you could see some maybe bad blood in the water uh, when there's a transfer or maybe there could be some hard feelings. But this is one of those situations where it was really on good terms. Uh, it was a mutual understanding, and I'm glad both parties are still having success. Yeah, McMenemy had a great career at Ohio State, played at 82 games, started 49 of them, hit 215 in her time there. 2-2 two is the count. Here's the pitch from Smith. Swung on the ground to second. Rodriguez gloves and throws out her former Buckeye teammate, McMenemy. Two up, two down for Ohio in the home half of the first. And Analia Paoli steps in. 344 hitter this year. 21 hits. Right behind their hits leader in this lineup, Spacek, just by one. They call her P. 5'8 sophomore, Point Mary in Pennsylvania. First pitch to her, uh, she rockets it foul down the third baseline. Nothing in one to start. And it's cool to think about this too, that Paoli last year did not play. And this year she's scorching the softball, hitting 344. Yeah, sometimes people just need that extra year to be able to go, get into the system, go and train, and just have a year to kind of just take a breath, just focus on all those fundamentals, and then it all comes together. And uh, she's really having a season where it really is all coming together, Jake. She checked at an off-speed pitch upstairs, nearly went around. However, the, uh, the umpires say she did not. Count is one ball, one strike. Two gone for Ohio, nobody on and no score. The pitch, another high one. Two balls, one strike, two Paoli. Yeah, as a freshman, just uh, didn't see time last year, and that's okay, too. Sometimes you just need to take that year to learn. Two balls, a strike, two outs. Here's the pitch from Smith. Hit in the air, right side of the field, curling foul, and it's out of play. That evens, evens the count up at two and two. No score. Ohio State had one base runner back in that first inning. Maggie Audi. She was stranded there after a walk. She worked a full count. Here's the 2-2 with two outs. Outside just misses. Smith showcases a smile inside the circle. And we have a payoff pitch coming up. Three balls, two strikes, two gone. Nobody on for Ohio. And we're without a score so far. Smith's ready. She rocks and fires. Swung on and lifted foul out of play. Left side. Paoli, her battle continues at home. Allison Smith, a member of the Big Ten All-Freshman team. Last year, 5'11 sophomore from Champion, Ohio. Gets her sign from the first base dugout. And checks her wrist as well. She's ready. The payoff pitch to Paoli. Lifted again out of play to the right side. And those standing out on the hill, a fan dropped the easy routine foul ball. Yeah, that would go down as an error. Just to, goes to show how packed today is. I mean, there are people everywhere in Athens. And it's still counting as well. People are still walking towards the stadium. It's creating a buzz in the parking lot as well. People are sitting on top of their cars beyond right field. Here's the payoff. Inside, ball four. Paoli works a walk. And this inning continues with Sophia Bernard, the DP. And something, too, that Coach Shanley, uh, Shanley rather, talked about, head coach for Ohio State. She said she was very pleased with her team's, you know, uh, strikeout to walk ratio. Not a lot of, not a lot of walks for this Ohio State uh, pitching staff. And in fact, for Allison Smith, that's just her 20th walk this year compared to her 43 strikeouts. So that's a, talk about good ratio, Cedric. That's where we start as uh, Bernard steps in. She's ready. Here's the first pitch. And it's outside for strike one. Yeah, talk about a terrific ratio. Um, this team, they really are exceptional at the rise ball, especially getting it out of the zone in those key situations. Uh, the last at-bat wasn't a great example of that, but um, you've seen earlier in this on the first series uh, with Spacek there, uh, that rise ball at the end can be something that's very dangerous. Wild pitch to the backstop, and Paoli moves up in the scoring position for Bernard. So the count is 2-0 and oh to Bernard. 5'6", junior from Canton, Ohio. 
She hit, uh, she was two for 10 in the three game series at Buffalo. Two outs, runner on scoring position for Ohio. Next pitch to Bernard is out, outside. And it should be two and one. Yeah, our scoreboard here in venue is wrong. See, 99% of the time, I feel like I'm the wrong one, Cedric, but I thought that it would be two and one. Here's the next pitch. Fouled back to the screen, and now we're even, two and two. Yeah, no, I was with you the whole time there, Jake. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes just a little bit slow, but we got each other's back. Good, I'm glad somebody was, uh, was with me on that. Two balls, two strikes, two down. No score, bottom half of the first. Ohio with a runner in scoring position at second base. Smith sets. Here's the 2-2 in the dirt. Full count to Bernard and another payoff pitch coming up. No hit either in this game. The 3-2 pitch. Swung on, put in play to second base in the air and it's caught by Rodriguez. And the pop out to the second baseman ends the inning. No score, we played one. Both teams have stranded at least one base runner. Bobcats with the gloves, Buckeyes have the bats when we come back on the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. When you order your groceries online with ClickList from Kroger, you can do your shopping anytime, anywhere, like the gym, the office, or your favorite comfy couch. And whether you place your order on your phone, tablet, or computer, it's still your neighborhood Kroger. So you'll find all the fresh choices, low prices, and great deals you love. And you'll save time, too. Try ClickList from Kroger with same-day pickup. Check it out at Kroger.com. Fresh food, low prices at Kroger. These days, we're all doing a lot more virtually. Which is why at Ohio Health, we've expanded our virtual care options and availability to make it even easier to get safe expert care at home. That includes virtual visits with over a thousand trusted providers in every medical specialty. Learn more about our virtual health options at ohiohealth.com slash virtual health. Ohio State. Five, six, seven batters do up this inning for the 17 and five. Number 23 ranked Buckeyes. In case you're wondering where that number 23 is, it's an uh, extra inning softball poll. Came in at number 23 after uh, beating USF. They were ranked 22 down in Tampa. First pitch to uh, Mackenzie Bump. She scorches it to straightaway center, hits off the top of the wall, and she's in with a standing double. That's about as close as it gets to a home run right there. If that carry just an inch higher, that would have been out of the park. Yeah, the 476 hitter gets the Buckeyes off to a fantastic start in the top half of the second and no score. And I was just about to say about Mackenzie Bump. I mean, in her, in her last 10 games, she's swinging 476. She uh, <laughs> went 10 for 22 down in that spring break trip down to Tampa. Four RBIs, four extra base hits as Cammie quarter cracks comes in, 5'10 freshman from Westerville, Ohio, riding a six game hit streak coming into today. First pitch to her, off speed in there, called strike. Quarter cracks. This week's Big Ten Freshman of the Week. After she went 11 for 25 in Tampa, 440 <laughs> average. Next pitch to her, she fouls back to the screen on an inside jam job. Nothing in two to the Big Ten Freshman of the Week. Bishop Hartley product. A rival school of mine back in high school. I'm a St. Charles grab myself. So. Ah, I see. Nothing in two with no outs and no score. Bump on second base. The 0-2. Scorched to third down the line and fair. Around third base, Mackenzie Bump. She's going to score without a throw. In fact, that throw did come. The third baseman, Paoli, didn't cut the throw. So it went all the way to the backstop, and quarter cracks went to second base. Ohio State won. Ohio nothing in the top of the second. 
Yep, and they came out swinging once again. It's a very similar situation uh, to the USF game where they got up 3-0 before you could even blink uh, just because, again, everybody came out swinging. They weren't going to go and do a lot of checks. They're kind of ready to go, and they were revving up right there, and that's why they were able to put up a run already and take an early lead here on the road in Athens. Taylor Pack, the catcher, lefty, steps in for the first time today. 229 hitter this year. Shows bunt, puts it in play in front of Cole. She gloves, throws the first to Juhas, who covers, and there's out number one. However, she does her job. She moves quarter cracks over to third base in this one nothing game. So for quarter cracks, we're going to call that a single unofficially, and she moved to second base on the throw home. Mariah Rodriguez, second baseman today. Steps in. 130 hitter this year. She has three hits. Just a one RBI with the opportunity for her second. And it stands on third base at this juncture. Sees the ball upstairs. 1-0 to start. Infield playing in for Ohio. Outfielders playing straight up. Here's the 1-0 from Cole. Outside edge. Call the strike. 1-1. One and one. One thing, too, that Ohio State feels like they're hitting a lot more for power. Really, as Cole misses upstairs, two and one. Yeah, they've been doing a great job of getting a lot more extra base hits. And earlier in the season, they were getting a lot more singles, uh, walking, and a lot of things like that. But now you're seeing a lot more doubles, triples, and even homers have started to come on as of late. And it's been reflected in the amount of points they've been able to score. Next pitch outside, ball three to Rodriguez. And yeah, Kelly Shanley was talking about that. She said, you know, the pitch selection has been great offensively. And also my team's just not afraid to swing and miss. That's why they are hitting for power. They're just loose at the plate and they look great. Especially for a team that hit insane over the last 10 games. Hit 347 as a team, that's unthinkable. The three ones fouled off to the right side and out of play. Count runs three and two. One gone for Ohio State in the top of the second, and a 1-0 score for the Buckeyes. A double to start inning number two, and a single by Cami Kordekrax, her sixth RBI of the year and her 20th hit, has put OSU on top. Next pitch, swung on the ground to second base. Yuha gloves, throws home, and is in time! Score stays 1-0. Great play by Juhas at second base as Rodriguez reaches first. Two outs, top half of the second, and Juhas saves a run. You have loved that decision right there. Obviously, they could have went for the force out at first, but you want to try to do anything to be able to keep that score at one, and they are able to pick off the runner before she can get to home. Melina Wilkerson, the right fielder and 370 hitter, hitting ninth in this lineup today for Ohio State, steps in. Righty on righty matchup with two outs and a runner on first base. The pitch show a bunch. She lays it down the third base line and it's foul. Paoli charged in and gloved it in foul grounds. So nothing in one to start for Wilkerson. Good idea though, sneak one down the third base line. I respect it. Cole's ready inside the circle, the 0-1. Inside, hits the edge. Nothing in two now to Wilkeson. Ohio State one, Ohio nothing. Top half of the second. As Cole wipes some dirt off the softball, she's ready to go. The 0-2 is hit on the ground through the left side hole, a base hit. And Ohio State with two outs has runner now, runners now on first and second. And we're back topside for Ohio State with J.C. Roberti, who's 0 for 1 today. She fight out to straightaway center her first time up. That was an impressive job of finding the hole, finding that space right between the shortstop and third base, and she was able to scoot that ball right there between it. The 5'7 senior from Virginia Beach, Virginia, also a Hofstra transfer. She has two years of eligibility left. First pitch is low and outside to her, and ball one. She hit 429 in the last 10 games. What a spring break for her. Eight hits in the first four games down in Tampa. The 1-0 outside. 
Throw down to second base. It's almost in time. Brooke Rice has a BB behind home plate. And if you're not careful on the base paths, she'll gun you down in an instant. Yeah, that defense on the back end between Rice uh, at the catcher position as well as the second baseman and shortstop, they are always on it to make sure that they're holding the uh, runners accountable. The 2-0 has bounced to second base. Yuha glo Yuhas gloves and flips to second for the force out and out number three. So two innings, or I should say inning and a half, Ohio State leads Ohio one to nothing on a double to begin and a single after that. one nothing Buckeyes on Ohio. This is the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. Let's go Cats. Let's go Labatt Blue Light. When you drink a pristine Canadian Pilsner, you're good at beer. Bobcats fans, grab a Labatt Blue Light and be good at beer. Always enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2021 Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All rights reserved. Labatt, registered U.S. trademark of Labatt Brewing Company, LTD. We've all seen the tragedies associated with drug activity and impaired driving in our state. This is Trooper Conkler of the High State Highway Patrol's Athens Post. We need everyone's help to keep drugs out of our communities, keep impaired drivers off our roads, and get people to make good decisions when driving. Traffic and community safety is the responsibility of everyone. You can do your part in calling pound 677 to report drug activity and impaired or reckless drivers to law enforcement. Together we can make Ohio a safer place to live and travel. Back in Athens. Thanks so much for joining us as Ohio State leads Ohio one to nothing. Home half of the second inning. Caitlin Fogue, Tori Walker, Brooke Rice two up this inning for Ohio. Five, six, seven batters two up after Ohio stranded one back in the first inning for a chance to uh, strike first. But instead it's Ohio State who on a double to begin inning number two and a single have taken the lead. First pitch to Caitlin Fogue down and away for ball one. And Ohio with some work to do against Allison Smith and the Buckeyes, seeking their first win against Ohio State since uh, 2018. The 1-0, swung on and missed. One and one. I remember that 2018 win very well. I mean, that was a very talented Bobcats team that just went right up to Columbus and didn't give the Buckeyes a chance at all. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Inside. Called the strike. One and two. And when we look through the roster and look through uh, some of the graduate uh, seniors and stuff, some of those players might have just been on that team that beat Ohio State, even though they were young. Yeah, Allie Inglet for one. Brooke Rice, I believe, was on the roster at the time. Next pitch high and away, two and two. Caitlin Folk, however, was not the 5-4 senior from Columbia, Missouri. Hit 500 at Buffalo. She went five for 10 with the homer and two ribbies. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Chased one upstairs. And Allison Smith has her second strikeout today. Tori Walker approaches the plate. 261 hitter. Six hits this year. The fifth year from Plain City, Ohio. Allison Smith rocks and deals. Low and in. 1-0. Oh. Walker enjoyed a uh, very good career at Winthrop. Started every game she played, 113 appearances. She hit 288 back in 2020. The 1-0 oh. doesn't chase the high and away pitch. Two balls and no strikes. And it just made sense for her to come to Ohio. I mean, she's a Plain City, Ohio native. Went to Jonathan Alder High School. Enjoyed a very successful high school career. The 2-0. Popped her up, but the spin of the softball is going to push it into the stands. And it'll be 2-1. and one. Yep, This time it was caught by somebody in the stands there. So that puts the uh, people in the stadium at a 1-1 one one, or 1-2 one for two on catches today. And it's a packed house here at OSF. People are sitting on the concrete. In front of the first row of the bleachers, people are standing in the very last portions of the bleachers. Uh, they're standing room out towards the hills on behind both dugouts. The 2-1. One. 
Another foul back to the fans. First row seats. Counts even, two and two. Mixture of scarlet and green. A lot of student athletes in athletics department folk are the ones that are out on the hills behind the dugouts. See a lot of familiar faces here. It's awesome to see. Heard they sold 636 tickets before this game. The 2-2 upstairs and Walker leaves it be. Three balls, two strikes, one down for Ohio. They trail Ohio State one to nothing in the home half of the second. All I know is that if this Bobcats team gets hot at any point in this game and it's a close one, this place is going to go bonkers. Oh, yeah, I saw it go bonkers when they went up against Marshall. And uh, when it started actually with Tori Walker, when she hit that home run, everybody went absolutely nuts. And we'll see if we see something similar. I feel like if any home run happens, whether it's for the Buckeyes or the Bobcats, uh, you're going to hear each side's loud and proud. Foul off to the left side, out of play. Count stays three and two with one gone for Ohio. Smith sets the 3-2 pitch. Outside and away for ball four. Just the second walk today for Allison Smith and only her 21st walk on the year. And Brooke Rice, who's enjoyed a uh, offensive best year, steps into the batter's box as she looks down to Kenzie Roark down the third base line for her signs. And the right-hander steps in from Mason, Ohio, the 5'11 fifth year. Last year hit 202. Runner breaks, oh, never, never mind. It looked like Walker was going to break for a second. She just had a very hefty leadoff. But Rice this year hitting 309, 17 hits. Last year she hit 202. In the shortened COVID season, she was up to 227. The 0 1 inside counts even. Do be on the lookout for the Bobcats when it comes to stealing bases. They are 41 for 43 on the year, which is very efficient. So they show they could be very dangerous at being able to go get those steals. The 1 1 offering. Swing and a miss. Rice hesitated a little bit. Thought it might have been her pitch. Thought it may have not been her pitch. And a little late there. And with someone like Allison Smith, who's been awesome all year for Ohio State. Got to be sharp in the, in the box. The one, two. Leaves it be upstairs. Counts even. Two apiece. There's that attempted finishing rise ball right out of the strike zone to try to get the uh, hitter swingers and swinging. So that's some really great discipline on the um, home base right there by Rice. Runner on first base, one gone for Ohio. Two twos to count on Rice. Smith delivers. Low and away for ball three. For someone like Smith, I mean, now back to back batters with full counts. Righty on righty matchup. The full count pitch is flared to the right side and foul grounds and caught by Carver. And two gone now for Ohio. Good pitch. She caught Rice on an inside jam job. And now that brings up Yasmin Logan, the center fielder. They call her Yaz, the 241 hitter this year. Seven hits for the 5 5 sophomore from Pittsburgh. Two down for Ohio, runner on first base. They're behind Ohio State, one to nothing in the bottom of the second. And the first pitch hits the outer portion of the plate for strike one. Ohio left Analia Paoli on second base back in the first inning. And there, they do have Walker on first. Next pitch high and away, one and one. Logan last year played in 24 games. She's now a consistent starter for Ohio. Low and in for ball two. She went three and seven at Buffalo. And had her second multi-hit game in game three of that series. Two runs scored, a double and an RBI. The 2-1 upstairs. And a hitter's count, three and one to Logan.
The 3 1. Strike call inside edge. Good pitch by Smith. And a payoff coming up. Three balls, two strikes, two outs for Ohio. Put the runner on first base. Ohio State one. Ohio scoreless. Bottom of the second. Smith's ready. The payoff. She flares it up the middle. The shortstop quarter cracks, catches it with a basket catch in front of the second base bag. And there's out number three. It's a little bloop out. Ohio's retired. They trail Ohio State one to nothing. We head to the third on the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. Let O'Neill Hartman Insurance show you how Grange's strong value and fast claim service delivers league-leading coverage. O'Neill Hartman Insurance will find you a Grange auto policy that balances competitive rates and responsive Grange claim service. O'Neill Hartman Insurance considers Grange their go-to company for their combination of great value and outstanding claim service. Call O'Neill Hartman at 740-797-4685 or visit them online at O'NeillHartman.com. You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. Second, third, fourth batters of the lineup for Ohio State do up in the top half of the third inning. The Buckeyes on top of Ohio, one to nothing. Along with Cedric Granger, Jay Cremata with you. Jordan Bowes running our stream today. Big thanks to uh, these two for putting up with me. And thanks to you, the viewer, as well, for tuning in today. As Kenzie Cole's first pitch to Meggie Adi is fouled back to the backstop. Nothing and one to start to Adi. Who ground, or I beg your pardon, who walked her first time up and was stranded on first base back in the first inning. The 257 hitter this year. Looking for her 20th hit of the season with this at bat. Next pitch is swung on and lined to right field, and uh, Walker can't come up with it. It goes all the way to the wall. On her horse to second base and taking a big turn is Adi. She stays there. In back to back innings, the Buckeyes have leadoff doubles. And with a hot bat like Sam Hackenbrock at the plate, Cedric. Uh, not a good start for Ohio here in the top of the third. Not at all. Um, Ohio State, you can really describe their hitting as contagious. Whenever one person really gets it started and then another one goes, it's like dominoes that are falling. Uh, they just continue to be able to get hits after hit after hit. And it's going to be up to Cole to really take control of this game. And Mackenzie Cole. Deals the first pitch to Hackenbrock. It's called a strike, nothing in one. Cole this year has allowed over a double per game as Kenzie Roark pauses the game and she talks to her senior pitcher, gathers the infield inside the circle to have a conversation with her and meeting adjourned. Yeah, sometimes that's all you need is just a little bit of a chance just to take a little breather, relax, uh, and just try to get the last pitch out of your mind and really focus on this next at bat. It's really a big mental battle between the hitter and the pitcher and being able to keep that mental toughness going. And she's had a lot of tests. Cole's had to go against some really tough competition, some tough ranked foes in Georgia and Kentucky. So she is certainly battle tested. The pitch is swung on and hit high, deep to left field. No doubt about it, it's gone. Her eighth homer of the year, Sam Hackenbrock. And Ohio State goes up two more, three nothing in the top half of the third. The stars are starting to shine here for the Buckeyes as Hackenbrock shows why she is so dangerous and why she was the co-Big Ten player of the week. And she's gonna try to win that award two weeks in a row uh, with that big swing hitting the rooftop of the building uh, to the top left of your guys' screen. Uh, just goes to show, like I said earlier, the Buckeyes are very contagious when it comes to hitting, and momentum seems to be on their side. Nikki Carver at the plate now, the right-hander, sees a ball, 1-0 to start. 
And Sam Hackenbrock now, all eight of her home runs have happened in six of the last nine games that she's played now. Unbelievable. She hit 500 over spring break. Called strike to Carver. And I don't want to take anything away from Nikki Carver, who's just as good at the plate. And uh, has a three-game hit streak coming into this evening. 3-0 Ohio State leads Ohio, bottom half of the third. Here's the 1-1 from Cole. Hit on the ground to third. Paoli gloves between the legs, throws to first for out number one. And Mackenzie Bump, who recorded Ohio State's first hit in this game, back in the second when she let off with a double, comes up to the plate. It's just from top to bottom, this Buckeyes lineup. I mean, you're facing 344, 257, 377, 296, and someone that, like Bump, who's a 476 hitter. And then you have Quartercrax, who's a 339 hitter. It's just, it it doesn't let up at all. This It's just like a boa constrictor as uh, Bump takes a first pitch strike. Nothing in one to start. Yeah, it's absolutely relentless, Jake. And again, like I said, it's not the first time Cole's gone through a lineup like this. It's really going to help her come Mac play to be able to go against these tough competition and these tough teams. But still, in the moment, in this game, that's a big one at home. Uh, it's definitely no easy task there on the circle. Yeah, Bump swings through an off-speed pitch, so it's nothing in two now to Bump, who's one for one today. Ohio playing Bump straight up. The 0-2. Laser to third, Paoli there to glove it in front of her mask. Whew. And Paoli looks at her third base dugout. Watch your lips. Paoli could probably play a little bit of catcher at that point. That almost seemed like a pitch coming right at you. That's why they call it the hot corner. Two down now for Ohio State after the two-run home run by Sam Hackenbrock has put the Buckeyes up three to nothing in the visitors' half of the third. Cole ready to face Cammie Kordekrax, the freshman, who reached on a fielder's choice her first time up. First pitch is a ball, 1-0. Kordekrax, Kelly Shanley had a lot of compliments for Kordekrax before the game, just saying she could be a real special player for this team. She puts in the work. She looks at an out, uh, outside strike, 1-1. One yeah, she has huge potential, and of course, whenever you're a freshman going into a new system and going on to a much higher level of competition, yeah. that could usually be a tough adjustment. But to see somebody who's adjusted so well, is already getting great playing time already as a freshman, just showcases just a little bit yeah. of how great of a player she's going to be, and she already is. Ball thrown outside, two and one, and yeah, Coach Shanley was, uh, Shanley rather was saying that you know she just needed the in-game experience. She's good enough to to be in the shortstop spot as a freshman. And it's, it's great to know that, you know, if she messes up, she, she knows that she's going to get another, ch another chance. She floats one to the right field sidewall, foul. And counts now two and two. But her defense is great, too. And, you know, to be a freshman starting as a shortstop at a Big Ten school, you have to be a, a special player to, to wear those kinds of, sh to wear that shoe. And it certainly fit Sammy Quartercracks this year. The 2-2, she flares it out to deep right field. Going back as Walker, she makes the over-the-shoulder catch for out number three. Big play by Walker out in right field. And that ends the inning, although Ohio State does some damage. A two-run home run by Sam Hackenbrock puts the Buckeyes up 3-0. Bobcats grab the bats. This is the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. The past year and a half, we've all been part of unprecedented times that have been heavy. At Integrated Services for Behavioral Health, we have been here for you throughout the heaviness of the pandemic and will continue to be here for you whenever you need us. Checking in on your behavioral health and well-being is more important than ever. If you feel like you can benefit from home or community-based support, counseling, peer recovery support, and a myriad of other services we offer at 800-321-8293, we're here for you. 
Bobcat fans, the Hugh White Family of Dealerships is your hometown Athens dealer. And to show our commitment to the community, we're offering free car washes for Ohio University students and faculty, as well as college grad discounts with all of our new brands. But that's not all. We provide free concierge service for faculty. We'll pick up your vehicle and drop it back off after service. Take advantage of our leases at under $200 per month. Come visit us on North Columbus Road, less than five minutes from campus or online at visithughwhite.com. And remember, if the deal is right, it must be Hugh White. Ohio State three, Ohio nothing. Bottom half of the third as the Ohio Bobcats come up to the plate. Ohio State five hits, three runs, including a two-run bomb by Sam Hackenbrock to put the Buckeyes up three nothing to give them a little more cushion. Bobcats have some work to do offensively, Cedric. Yes, they do. Um, again, this is one of those games where you really can't afford to wait till the fifth or sixth inning to be able to get any offense going. And with this pitching staff of Ohio State, it doesn't let up. So it's not like uh, Smith is the only great pitcher on this team. They have Lexi Hanley in the back, who's started the most game for them this year and has seven wins. Also, you have Emily Ruck, who's undefeated as a pitcher. Uh, so, again, it doesn't get any easier. So you're going to have to start scoring, and you're going to have to start scoring soon. And uh, they'll have the opportunity to try to do that in this inning. Lauren Juhas at the plate. She's already seen two pitches, and the first pitch was a strike. Last one you just saw was a ball. Juhas this year, 292 hitter. Very high for a ninth spot hitter. The next one is lined deep into right. Coming in is Roberti. She makes the catch knee high near the foul line. Juhas bat on ball, but just right at Roberti where she could make a play. Two. And one up, one down for Ohio. Spacek comes back to the plate for Ohio. And we're back topside for the green and white. Spacek struck out on three pitches her first go around. And she skies one on the first pitch. Left side near the left field line. And Roberti calls off quarter cracks for out number two. Definitely no Roberti's not falling asleep back there. Megan McMenemy, former Buckeye, 0 for 1 today. Grounded out the second, her first time up. We mentioned she spent four years at Ohio State. Her last year with the Buckeyes was her best. She hit 263. She sees the pitch high for ball one that sent Pack out of the crouch. McManamy, five-game hit streak coming into today. And a hit in six of her last seven, the pitch. Fouls it off to the, to the netting behind home plate, one and one. And McManamy, left foot first, back in the left-handed batter's box. One and one count as Smith gets her sign. She delivers the one one. Another foul back to our uh, back to the stands. One ball, two strikes. One of Ohio's more consistent hitters this year, McMenemy. Four multi-hit games. She's had one three-hit contest as well. Hit for the cycle against Marshall. She lines one through the left side hole, and it's down for a base hit. And Ohio with a two-out single to keep this bottom of the third alive. And they trail 3-0 to Ohio State. Bobcats definitely needed that. That is their first hit of the game. And they had a little bit of a dry spell to start the game. So to be able to get that first one out of the way really just gets the monkey off your back. Analia Paoli, who walked back in the first inning, comes up to bat with a runner on first base and two gone for Ohio, trailing Ohio State 3 to nothing. First pitch, she puts it in play to the second baseman in the air, Rodriguez, and Rodriguez under it makes the catch. Maybe not the pitch she really wanted to swing at there with two outs and a runner on first base and down 3-0 to Ohio State. We go to the fourth, Bobcats down to OSU, 3-0. We step aside on the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. 
Whether you're coming to Athens to root on the Bobcats, visiting friends and family, or just in town for business, the Hampton Inn in Athens wants to be your home away from home. With 86 sparkling rooms, complimentary high-speed internet, hot breakfast served each morning, and a spa and business center, you can expect a great night stay with service that will bring you back. Visit us on the web at HamptonInn.com. That's HamptonInn.com. And go Bobcats! If you're traveling to a game, a weekend road trip, or just around town, you need to stop at GoMart. You'll find a GoMart open 24 hours a day right off the interstate or right off Main Street in your local community. You can refuel your ride with quality gasoline and also yourself with popular snacks, drinks, and more. We're making it easy to keep up with your busy schedule by keeping you on the go. GoMart is the proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat football. Go for good times. Back in Athens as we enter the top half of the fourth inning. Along with Cedric Granger, Jake Romano with you. Jordan Bowes producing our stream today. Thanks so much for joining us in Athens. As Taylor Pack, Mariah Rodriguez, and Melina Wilkinson are due up this inning for Ohio State. And Pack sees a first pitch strike from Mackenzie Cole. 0-1-1 to begin the top half of the fourth. As the 7-8-9 batters do up. Pack had a sack bunt her first time up. The 0 1 outside. Ball one. But she sacrificed herself so the Buckeyes could have a more impactful second inning. She moved over Cami Quartercracks to third from second to third. And she skies one left to left field, and Caitlin Fogue is there to make the play. One up, one down for Ohio State here in the top half of the fourth. And Mariah Rodriguez, second baseman, singled her first time up. That was back in the second inning as well. Righty on righty matchup. First pitch to her is swung on and lifted into center field routinely in the air for Logan, who gets under it to make the catch. Wow, the Buckeyes haven't gone two up, two down at all this game, Cedric. No, nope, not at all. And again, when you see this, you just look at the timing already. This is another inning that's starting off with two outs very quickly uh, for the Bob or for the uh, Bob. Sorry, I always switch them up. My bad, my bad. <laughs> that happens to the best of us every now and again. But yeah, so that's the first time that's happened for Ohio State. The Bobcats doing a great job on defense, and can they finish it off? There yeah, they go. Wilkinson is popped up behind the plate. Brooke Rice makes the play. Three up, three down for Ohio State. They have not done that today. And the Bobcats in this quick visitors half of the fourth, they retire Ohio State in order, and they grab the bats when we come back on the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. Jumpstart your day at the Fairfield Inn and Suites in Athens. Enjoy complimentary hot breakfast, then unwind on our beautiful outdoor patio, which includes a gas fire pit and barbecue grill. Conveniently located on East State Street, just a short drive from the Ohio University campus and uptown Athens, the Fairfield Inn and Suites is situated near many shopping and dining venues. At the Fairfield Inn and Suites, you're our number one priority. Call 740-589-5839 to book your next visit to Athens or find us online at fairfieldinn.com. Hi, this is Jared Dean with Dean Heating and Cooling. As your local Tempstar dealer, you can experience superior home comfort with Tempstar game-changing technology. Whether you need a fall tune-up or a midwinter repair call, our expert technicians will make sure your heating system is running at peak performance. Count on Dean Heating and Cooling and Tempstar to keep you cozy all winter long. Find us online at deanheatingandcooling.com and go Cats! Sophia Bernard leads things off for Ohio in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Caitlin Fogue on deck and Tori Walker do up for the Bobcats. Down 3-0 to Ohio State. Home half of the fourth inning. Allison Smith still, at, uh, still inside the circle for OSU. And she deals a ball that goes right to the backstop way too high. And it's 1-0 to start for Sophia Bernard. 
Bobcats got their first hit last inning by uh, from Megan McMenemy. Other than that, Ohio's offense has been stagnant. The 1-0 swung on and missed. 1-1. One and, one. and the pressure starts to go up as the game goes on as you feel like you have less and less at-bats and less and less chances, and you know you got to get something rolling. Well, and it's been hard, too. I mean, two of these last three innings for Ohio's offense, Cedric, they've gone two up, two down immediately. Ball thrown to Bernard, two and one. And kudos to Allison Smith inside the circle. She's pitching a gem right now. Yeah, she's doing absolutely terrific there. And this pitching staff, like I said, I can't rave about them enough that this isn't even the person or the pitcher that started the most games for Ohio State, and she's doing this at such a high level. Foul back behind us and out of play. Two balls, two strikes to Bernard. And Sophia Bernard, just one multi-hit game this year. In the nine games that she's played, 22 at-bats. In at DP, no Ally Inglet today, still recovering from her dislocated shoulder that she suffered against. She swings one, high and deep to right field. This ball is off the top of the wall. Bernard goes into second base with a standing long double. Now there's some fireworks for the Bobcats. They needed something like that. If that would have just gone a few more inches, that would have been a homer. But at least that gets somebody on base, and Bernard was able to kick it off there. And uh, she's definitely had a little bit more of a slump at these last couple of games, but she's starting to turn it around right here in this battle against Ohio State. And that's a good start for Ohio. They've left at least one base runner on the base pass in their previous in the previous three innings. And we'll see if Caitlin Fogue can bring around Sophia Bernard with that after the leadoff double. But yeah, no Ali Inglet as the first pitch to Fogue, low and in for ball one. She's one of their bigger bats too, Inglet. She might have been good to go today to play, but they, uh, Kenzie Rorick said uh, she wants to save Allie's energy for the weekend against Bo uh, Bowling Green. And it looks like we're going to have a uh, pinch runner for Bernard. We will. Number zero, Tori O'Brien comes in. And O'Brien, the 5'4 sophomore from Mason, Ohio, in the pinch run for Bernard. And remember, with softball, you have the reentry rule, too. So O'Brien comes in for Bernard, but Bernard can re-enter and bat again if Kenzie Roark wants her to, and I'm sure she will. She will, nothing against Tori O'Brien. I like that it gives a lot of players, though, a chance to be able to get into the game, to be able to get this experience, especially with O'Brien. She's a sophomore, younger player. Gives her a good shot to be able to go and possibly make a good play and get to get a run for the team. Fogue takes a strike inside. One ball, one strike. Runner on second base for Ohio. Down 3-0 to Ohio State in the bottom of the fourth. Smith's ready. Here's the 1-1. She flares it to the right side, halfway down the first baseline, and Carver makes the catch. Just a lot of those today, Cedric. They're, I mean, Bobcats is under a lot of pitches, and they're sending them... Not deep at all, but just in the air right to the infield. We've seen that a lot today. Yeah, this is kind of like the little blooper ball where they just can't get enough of it, and it just kind of goes and it skips a little bit high up in the air, but then it's right in the infield. They almost don't even have to move that much. Tory Rock, uh, Walker rockets one foul above the third base dugout. Nothing in one to start. Yeah, that dugout's in a pretty precarious spot. We've seen a couple of foul balls uh, go that direction. You really got to have your head on a swivel if you're in that dugout. Runner on second base for Ohio in scoring position with one out. O'Brien, uh, beg your pardon, Walker with an open stance at the plate. O'Brien at second base. The pitch is fouled over to the on-deck circle and hits the top of the third base dugout. 0-2 oh to Tori Walker. So Tori Walker at the plate and Tori O'Brien pinch running at second. Righty on righty matchup. Smith sets the 0-2 pitch. Low. One ball, two strikes to Walker. 261 hitter, walked her first time up back in the second inning with two outs. With one out, rather. The pitch, she hits it hard on the ground, but foul, third base side. K 
Count stays, one and two. She seems to be getting some pitches that she likes, at least well enough to be able to go for with a swing. Uh, so being able to stay in this at bat, uh, she might be able to get one to hit perfectly. Smith is set. Walker is ready at the plate. The one-two pitch. Outside, count runs even. Two balls and two strikes. First time Ohio State's been here since 2016. And, of course, Bobcat Nation showing up today. And Ohio State, <laughs> they knew that uh, today would be a, a day where a lot of fans showed up just because they are Ohio State. The 2-2 is scorched down the left field line. It's fair. It's going to get to the corner. Around third, O'Brien's going to score. All the way to second is Torrey Walker. RBI double in Ohio is down 3-1 to Ohio State in the bottom half of the fourth. Precisely, Jake. As I was uh, hinting at earlier, uh, we saw Tori Walker uh, being able to stay in the ad bat, and it looked like she was getting a couple of pitches that she really liked, and uh, she kept swinging, kept swinging, kept swinging, and she finally got the one that she wanted right down the third baseline. Ohio now down two, and they swap batter with base runner at second base with one out. Runner in scoring position on the two bag. The pitch to Brooke Rice. She chases high for strike one. And Brooke Rice had a hot start to her season. In the first 13 games, she was hitting 394. She was 13 for 34 with four doubles, a home run, and eight ribbies. The pitch outside and high. She leaves that one, one and one. But lately in her last eight, Rice, just four of 22, cooling off a little bit, hitting 182. See how big she can come up for the Bobcats here with one out and a runner on second base. The pitch, off-speed pitch. Ooh, it's a strike on the outside. Rice didn't like that one at all. One and two. Oh, not at all. You can definitely tell the speed change right there. And uh, when you're expecting the same pitch over and over again, uh, the nice little changeup can sometimes get you. And that was a pretty good move right there by Allison Smith on the circle. The one-two, just a bit outside. Boy, that didn't miss by much. Counts even, two and two to Rice. Allison Smith for Ohio State's thrown a fantastic ball game. Allowing the first run this inning. She misses high this time. Counts even. I beg your pardon. Count is full. Three and two. I mean, she'd only allowed one hit and no runs up to this point. Counts full. Smith sets the pitch. Foul down the left field line and out of play. All the way out of play. This is when you got to start to think about, about pitch count. It seems like almost every time there's an at bat, it seems like Smith is ending up uh, with a full count, getting about 9, 10, 11 pitches, and uh, that can start to weigh on you after a little bit. Count still even. Smith delivers. Outside, ball four. Two on, one out for Ohio for Yasmin Logan in a big spot for the sophomore who blooped out to the shortstop her first time up. That is the third walk today for Allison Smith. Bullpen still quiet for Ohio State down the right field line. Runners on first and second base for Ohio. Down 3-1 to Ohio State in the bottom half of the fourth. The pitch to Logan. Checked at it upstairs. Did she go around? They're going to appeal down the third base line. She did not. 1-0. The last time Ohio beat Ohio State, 2018, seven nothing shutout. And I wanna believe that was Ohio's championship year, 2018, yeah it was, the 1-0. Low and in. The year that Jody Hermanick took the ball club up to Akron. Quick call of time here as Pack has a conversation with Smith inside the circle for Ohio State and meeting quickly adjourns. But that was the last time Ohio beat 
Ohio State that was up in Columbus. Last time OSU came down here was 2016. Bobcats have only beaten Ohio State 16 times in program history, at least according to Ohio's record book. The 2-0 pitch to Logan. Fouls it off to the right side. Out of play. So it's 2-1. and one. Yeah, from a student perspective, it's always interesting seeing this Ohio State-Ohio battle because you got a lot of people from Columbus who go to school down here, and uh, some of us, it's almost a split loyalty between Ohio State and Ohio. Sometimes it's difficult to be able to choose. And then other people, maybe from Cleveland or Cincinnati, are uh, more on the side of OU all the way. Take down Ohio State, take down the big boys in the state. Logan looks at ball three, high and wide. Another hitter's count, three and one, with runners on first and second base in the bottom half of the fourth. Ohio trails Ohio State by two. The 3-1 is a strike. Upstairs in the zone, Allison Smith paints it. And it's a 3-2 count. A lot of noise coming from uh, that third base Ohio dugout. The 3-2. Ball four upstairs. Bases are loaded for Ohio. Walker at third, Rice at second, Yasmin Logan at first, and a big spot for Lauren Juhas as Kelly Shanley comes out of the first base dugout to have a conversation with Allison Smith. Back-to-back -back walks for a pitcher, Cedric, who has only had 19 walks this year. Yeah, that's been one of the strengths of Ohio State is not really giving up those walks, being able to go for the strikeouts, but it seems like the Bobcats are really up to the task. They're staying strong and staying disciplined, more importantly, uh, at home plate, and uh, they've been able to see it pay off and pay huge dividends so far, Jake. Pitching change for Ohio State. We're going to step aside, too, and tell you all about the new pitcher inside the circle as Allison Smith's day is done. Bases loaded for Ohio. Pitching change for Ohio State. 3-1 ball game, Buc uh, Buckeyes lead on the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. Voice of the Bobcats, Russ Eisenstein, on behalf of David White Services, the largest heating and cooling dealer in Southeast Ohio. They've been the choice of thousands for over 45 years. Offering the most efficient Lennox heat pumps, air conditioners, and furnaces, David White Services can save you money on your heating and cooling bills. Thanks, Russ. I'm David White. And I'm Esther White Thomas, inviting you to call us today to schedule a free estimate for heating and cooling or a new gas fireplace. David White Services is a proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat Athletics. Lexi Handley into the ball game for Ohio State. And Cedric, what are her numbers? Oh, yeah, she's been pretty impressive on the year uh, for the graduate senior out of Mogador, Ohio. She um, was originally an Akron Mac freshman of the year, so she's pretty familiar with OU. She then transferred over to the SEC as an Auburn Tiger, spent three years there, and then came back to Ohio State. She in 76 innings pitched. She has 99 strikeouts with an ERA of 1.83 and 33 walks. And uh, once again, she's another one of those pitchers where you can expect rise balls out of the zone in key situations. And she is 32nd in the nation in strikeouts. Another tough Ohio State pitcher out of their rotation as Lauren Juhas comes up to bat. Also pinch runner at second base is Emily Walker for Ohio. First pitch swinging strike one from Handley. So Emily Walker, number 10, in her 11th game as a Bobcat this year. She stands on second base. And Juhas behind in the count, 0-1. The next pitch from the lefty is popped foul off to the right side. And Juhas is down quick in the count, nothing in two. There is one out. Bases are loaded for Ohio. Allison Smith so far, three and a third. I should say she finishes her day with three and a third innings of work, three hits. So far, up to this point, one run. It was earned. And she walked four batters as Juhas chases upstairs for strike three. And the first batter that Lexi Handley sees, she sits down on strikes. Yeah, she's already showing why she is absolutely no joke as uh, she's very dangerous. All it took was three strike or three uh, pitches right there to be able to get the strikeout that quick. Carolyn Spacek at the top of the order at the plate now for Ohio. She fouls off the first pitch to the backstop, nothing in one. 
0 for 2 today. Carroll, as they call her, struck out on three straight pitches back in the first. And the first pitch she, she saw back in the third, she lifted routinely out to left field. Bases loaded, two outs. Ohio's down 2 2 Ohio State. The pitch is swung on and lifted high in the air to center, but Adi under it makes the catch. And Ohio leaves him loaded. That hurts. As we go to the fifth, Ohio State on top by two, three to one on the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. Okay, people, we all know what's at stake in this game. Zoe, what's at stake? Our futures. Our futures. And is anything going to keep us from achieving our goal? No way. Because what do we have? The plan. Ohio's 529 plan. Because in this family, how do we play the college savings game? Tax free. And where do we play it? Um, I don't know, Daddy. That's okay, Pumpkin. Want to win at college savings? Go to collegeadvantage.com slash bobcats. Together is a wonderful place to be. That's why CareSource is devoted to keeping you and your family healthy and happy. We promise you not only reliable health care, but also a helping hand with whatever your family needs to succeed. It's why more moms in Ohio choose CareSource for Medicaid than all other plans combined. Things only get better when we work together. And together, there's nothing we can't do. We are one. Learn more at CareSource.com. Top half of the fifth inning in the Ohio State Buckeyes took the trip down Route 33 all the way to Athens. They lead Ohio 3-1 to one in the beginning half of the fifth. Starting up momentarily, Cedric Granger, Jay Cremata with you. Jordan Bowes is producing our stream today. Big thanks to you for tuning in today as the top of the lineup comes up for Ohio State. J.C. Ruberti, 0 for 2 today, fly out to center, fielder's choice. And the lefty's ready, here's Cole, the first pitch to her is upstairs for ball one. Ohio State, in case you're just now joining us, back-to-back -back doubles, or I should say a double to begin the second inning by Mackenzie Bump. And she scored. Back in that second inning, Cami Kordekrax brought her around. Ball two thrown to Roberti, 2-0. And, oh. and then back in that third inning, Sam Hackenbrock doing her Sam Hackenbrock things. Two-run home run. Strike call outside corner. Two balls and a strike. Roberti, 344 hitter on the year. Has yet to do any damage. The pitch hit on the ground to first. Charging in spot check. Throws to first, but Juhas drops the throw. And that could come back to bite Ohio. Let's see if our stats crew calls that a hit. Nope. E3 on spot check. And it will go down as an E3. <laughs> Brings up another lefty, Maggie Adi. Doubled back in the third to begin the third. She also walked. She's one for one today. Checks at a ball outside and away. One ball, no strikes. And Adi spells her last name O-T-T-E, 5'9", senior. Hit 294 in that 11-day trip at Tampa. She was 6 for 11 in the, first, in the first three games of that trip. Outside and away for ball one. Adi, a career 262 hitter for Ohio State. She's four hits away, well now three hits away from 100 hits in her career. Boy, what a spring break Ohio State had in Columbus, eh? Yeah, I mean, it's almost interesting that we call it a spring break because for them, they were all hard at work yeah. getting those wins, eight wins uh, during that break, um, and being able to enjoy Florida. that didn't just play softball down there. They also were able to do a lot of team bonding, uh, being able to go to the beach as well, too. Um, again, it really went almost picture perfect for the Buckeyes. Cole misses outside to the lefty. It's three balls, no strikes. Runner on first base, the 3-0 pitch. 
It's a strike on the outside. Three balls and a strike. I was wondering if Adi had the green light on a 3-0 pitch. And I guess not. Ohio State three, Ohio one. Top half of the fifth inning here in Athens. We played a seven, the three one. Popped foul, left side. Three balls, two strikes. There are, I mean, this place is so packed that even in right field, there are students watching this game from the bed of their truck out beyond right field. Yeah, I'm just surprised nobody's trying to jump on the roof right there to be able to get a better view, maybe catch a home run ball. Yeah. Boy, Bobcat Nation, you've showed up today. Here's the 3-2. Blooped left side to Ohio's dugout, reaching over the third base dugout, making the catch is Paoli. Oh, what a play. Yeah, talk about toe drag swag right there, being able to go right into her dugout and make the catch, take a little bit of contact from the uh, fence of the dugout and still make the catch anyway. What an impressive play by Baoli. Her teammates kept her up from falling fully over the guardrail and down into their dugout. Wow, what a play. One down for Ohio State and... Hagenbrock hits one routinely in the left center field. The catch is made, the throw in, and staying at second base is Roberti, who after that foul ball was caught by Paoli. She advanced to second. And Hackenbrock falls to one and three today after she homered back in the third. Nikki Carver at the plate with the runner on second base and two gone. 3-1 ball game, Ohio State with the lead on Ohio. Cole sets, delivers, outside and away, and it gets past Rice, moving from second to third is Roberti. Unofficially, we'll say wild pitch, unless we're told otherwise. Yeah, that's what I'm going to mark down to. Wild pitch, yep. It matters on the sheet <laughs> for storytelling purposes, Cedric. Yeah, you it got matters. That <laughs> Here's the 1-0 pitch from Cole. Upstairs, two balls, no strikes to Carver. Carver 0 for 2 today, fly out to left, ground out to third, where Paoli in the hot corner at third has been busy. She took a hard shot <laughs> earlier, the 2-0. Hit on the ground right side, spot check, gloves on two bounces and steps on first for the out. So the error, in fact, does not come back to haunt Ohio. A fantastic gold glove play by Paoli over in front of, I should say, on her third base dugout. Not going to say save the inning, but boy, it sure did help. Ohio State 3, Ohio 1 on the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer here. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now, hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two mangoes. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer. IRC Beer. Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Plan your next visit to stand up and cheer for your Ohio Bobcats in Athens County, Ohio. Visit AthensOhio.com, the best resource for where to eat, where to stay, where to shop, and where to play. Athens County is home to countless trails and outdoor activities. Enjoy mountain biking, kayaking, rock climbing, and hiking. Find your own adventure. Cruise the Hawk Hawking Adena Bikeway. Mountain bike the Bailey's Trail System. Hike trails less traveled at Stroud's Run State Park. Or ride nine thrilling motorcycle routes on Ohio's Windy Nine. We can't wait to see you in Athens County, Ohio. Two three, two, three, four batters do up this inning for Ohio. Bottom half of the fifth inning. Lights are now providing the main source of lighting here at OSF as the sun begins, begins to set off the banks of the Hawking. With Cedric Granger, my name's Jay Cremata. Justin Bowes turning the dials for us, producing our stream today. As Lexi Hanley, the left-handed dealer for Ohio State, pitches a first pitch strike to Megan McMenemy. And it's nothing to start to McMenemy. Former Buckeye teammates, these two. Lefty on lefty matchup, the pitch, high and wide. One and one. McMenemy 
One for two today, singled back in the third. Hard ground now back in the first. The one one. Now two and one. Upstairs. McManamy went to Ohio State after a uh, fantastic prep career at Westerville Central. So many Westerville schools up at Columbus. Yes, Here's the 2-1. Right. It's fouled off at the plate, 2-2. Two and two. Cedric, tell your city to figure it out. How many Westerville schools do you need up there? Oh, trust me. With the way that Columbus is growing, Jake, oh, my gosh, all the schools are going to start getting and more and more. Uh, Westerville, we even have some people who live in Westerville that go to the Olentangy School District just because there's four Olentangy high schools. you got three Westerville high schools, yeah. and it's just going to keep getting yeah. bigger as uh, my hometown of Columbus uh, continues to grow. I wasn't going to start with the Olentangy's, but you just did. And the fact that you guys have four high schools is just ridiculous. Um, <laughs> they won't even be the last one, Jake, too, because Hilliard's about to get a 4-1-2 two coming oh, up here in a few years. Here's the 2-2. Two, two, swung on and hit high. Fairly deep to left field. Roberti there in the corner makes the catch in front of the uh, foul pole. So not deep enough for McMenemy. And Analia Paoli approaches the plate. Walked her first time up. Blooped out to the second baseman. Bobcats had a fantastic opportunity back in the fourth inning, Cedric with a leadoff double by Sophia Bernard and a RBI double by Tori Walker brought around the pinch runner O'Brien as Paoli skies one foul to the right side and out of play. So nothing in one. But the Bobcats, Cedric, bases loaded with one out, nothing doing, and uh, they were only able to put one on the board back in the fourth. Yeah, that's an opportunity where, where you find yourself down by two right now. That could have been the difference in the game. That could have made it a tie, could have made it at least 3-2 uh, if you were just able to uh, take advantage of that situation. And it's not like it was a full uh, bases loaded when there was two outs. It was bases loaded with one out. So even if you would have gotten a sacrifice bun or a sacrifice fly in any sort of situation, that could have brought somebody home. Uh, so definitely a missed opportunity, but there is still is time left in this game. And uh, if we've seen anything from the Marshall game, uh, the Bobcats are at their best late in the game. Paoli saw two pitches there. One was a strike, and the last one a ball. So one and two the count. The set, the one, two. Hit on the ground to short. Quarter cracks there. Gloves throws the first in time. And that brings up Sophia Bernard, one for two today with that double. That also uh, led to Ohio's only run today back in the fourth. And it was Bernard's sixth hit this year. And Bernard's first double. Lexi Handley is handling Ohio here in the fifth. She did back in the fourth. First pitch by Bernard. Up to the right and out of play. Yeah, it was impressive just seeing her take control of the game. That's a pretty precarious spot to be put in with the bases loaded, uh, one out only, and you're put in that spot. That's a tough as it gets, uh, but she showed complete control, complete poise in the circle uh, to be able to give up no more runs and keep the score at 3-1. It really showcases how great of a pitcher she's going to be, and there's no doubt in my mind uh, she's going to be up for a potential uh, Big Ten all-first team. Lexi Handley in her last outing at South Florida. I mean, she pitched five innings and allowed two hits and it shut out 9-0 Mercy Rule victory as Bernard hits one deep into left center field. But again, a Ruberti there. She tracks it down to make the catch. And the Bobcats go in order. One, two, three. We head to the sixth. Ohio State three, Ohio one. This is the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. The road to a championship is built on years of practice and hard work. That's true in basketball and the construction industry. The apprenticeship and upgrade training programs provided by the Athens Area Union Building Trades produces the workforce with the most modern skills and cutting edge knowledge in the industry. The key to success to the Bobcats on the floor is the same as your choice on the work site. The winning move is working with members of the Athens Area Union Building Trades, proud sponsor of Ohio University Basketball. You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero, when you first tasted what a burger should be like. 
two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Top half of the six coming up for Ohio State offensively. The Buckeyes out on top of Ohio, three to one. And uh, in the sixth inning, Mackenzie Bump, Cammie Cordercracks, and Taylor Pack all do up this inning for the Scarlet and Gray. And yeah, like Cedric and I were talking about during the break, some, some folks have even come to today's game with uh, Scarlet underneath with something green on top or, you know, green on the bottom and Scarlet on top. You know, you, you have that mixture. As the first pitch is sitting is a bunt back to the circle, fielded by Paoli and her throw not in time as Mackenzie Bump able to sneak her way to first base on the, uh, on the bunt, catching everybody off guard. Yeah, I don't think anybody expected that to be the start as all the uh, infielders were out by the plates, and uh, she was able to go and take advantage right there, and uh, Bump is able to make her way to first. Bump's second hit today, even though that was a bump. <laughs> 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 even though that was a bunt. <laughs> Uh, bump. <laughs> well, you got to love the bump. It was a bump, right? I mean, technically a bunt is a, a bump. Yeah, but. she just bumped the ball <laughs> forward, and now she ended up getting the base. That's the exact oh, same as her number, Cedric, first base. It's been a long day, my friend. But uh, that <laughs> that was her second hit today, even though it was a bunt. Um, Double her first time up back in the second inning. And uh, now she's up to 12 hits uh, this year. Cammie Cordercracks at the plate. The uh, freshman shortstop takes a first pitch strike. Nothing in one. Hopefully the listener at home will see past that. No, no, no. They will appreciate it, Jake. You got to embrace the puns. That's oh, something I always no, like to do on the it, broadcast. You got to embrace yeah. it. It was, un it was unintentional, that, that's for sure. A show of bunt, this one down the first base side. Cole out of the circle, flips to first, safe. Wow, quarter cracks beat the, the flip by Cole. Oh, what wheels. Back to bat, bunt singles. That hurts. Yeah, see, that's where we can't be getting loxadaisical out there if you're the Bobcats. And uh, seeing that, two bunts that end up both getting singles without any out to show for that, that's got to be frustrating for Coach Roark. Well, now, yeah, no outs. Runners on first and second. And uh, Ohio State is, I believe, yeah, we're going to have a pinch runner for Ohio State. Lindsey Potter, number 11. In her 15th game played this year, Potter is on first base for quarter cracks. Yeah, and she has five runs as a pinch runner this year, so she's been one who's been able to get home a few times. And pack a show a bunch, she pulled it back. It's, a, uh, it's called a strike, nothing in one. So back to back. Bunt singles for Ohio State here in the top half of the sixth. They lead three nothing or three to one rather, and no outs. Another show bunt lays it down back to Cole. Flips to first. This time Ohio gets an out. Two sack bunts for Taylor Pack today. The unsung hero for Ohio State's offense. See, that's just being unselfish out there, being able to put your teammates in the scoring position. And even though it's not going to show as an RBI or anything like that on the stat sheet, uh, those are the sort of plays that are going to lead to wins for the Buckeyes. And that's why they're a team that's 17-5 and five as it stands right now. And Kelly Shanley, I don't think. Oh, yeah, we do have a pinch hitter. Caitlin Kaufman. And Caitlin Kaufman, 5'8", senior from Visalia, California, swings through the first pitch and misses for strike one. Kaufman, seven of her last, uh, I should say, seven of the ten games over spring break she played in and hit 467. She was seven for 15. Big spot here for Ohio State to add cushion to their 3-1 lead. The pitch upstairs, ball one. Now 
now the question is on defense, will Kaufman sit back down or will Rodriguez re-enter? We'll find out in the bottom half of the sixth when uh, the Buckeyes grab the gloves. The 1-1 upstairs. And Ohio looking at their bullpen down the left field line. Kylie Kofelt is, in fact, warming up. However, she's been staying loose all game. Or Kofelt, excuse me. The 2 1. Outside, ball three. Yeah, Kofelt's got some time this year. She's 2 and 7, uh, has had 44 innings pitched. And uh, in the Marshall game, we got to see uh, her get some action as well, too. So definitely uh, be prepared to potentially see both of them. But uh, so far, Cole is holding down the fort. 3 1 is grounded to second base. Juhas gloves. Looks to third, back to the, I believe, where the bat or the base runner was. They got the out at first. They, uh, for whatever reason, threw to second base, and a run scores from third. Boy, that was a, a very softball play there. Juhas looked back. McKenzie bump back to third. Threw out Kaufman at second for the 4-3 putout. Bump scored because... First baseman Spacek through to first base where Lindsey Potter was dancing around to try to retire Potter. Potter got back safely, thus bump, advanced to home. Yeah, that was certainly a doozy right there, but you uh, caught it right uh, there, Jake. And again, it's one of those decisions where at first it looked like it was a great decision to keep the third baseman. Uh, still at the plate and not being able to move and um, they made the mistake of going towards second and that allowed them to yield the run making the score four to one now as the Bobcats now have a uh, increased deficit as a result of the decision. Yeah four one ball game top half of the sixth and Ohio State with two outs a runner on second base and Lindsey Potter a pinch runner for Cami Cordercracks. And first pitch to Molina Wilkinson is a ball. 1-0. and oh. Cole's ready. The 1-0 -oh deal. Hit hard through the left side hole. The base hit. And Potter around third to play at the plate is not in time. Throw to second base. Now the throw to third is Wilkinson's thrown out. Had to keep an eye on that, too, and Coach Shanley not too thrilled with the call at third base. Brooke Rice throws out Molina Wilkinson, trying to advance from second to third. However, the Buckeyes do tack on another run. We go to the home half of the six, Ohio State five, Ohio one, and the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. At People's Bank, our vision is to be the best community bank in America. We focus on building relationships with our clients and offering cutting edge financial products. People's Bank is proud to support the local communities in which we work and live. This is Ashley Brown, People's Bank Vice President and Regional Manager, and we would love a chance to earn your business. People's Bank, working together, building success. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Whether you're coming to Athens to root on the Bobcats, visiting friends and family, or just in town for business, the Hampton Inn in Athens wants to be your home away from home. With 86 sparkling rooms, complimentary high-speed internet, hot breakfast served each morning, and a spa and business center, you can expect a great night stay with service that will bring you back. Visit us on the web at HamptonInn.com. That's HamptonInn.com. And go Bobcats! Ohio State adds two more runs to their cushion. 5-1 ball game. Home half of the sixth. Bobcats with some offensive work to be done. They have one run. Scored on three hits. They had the bases loaded back in the fourth inning with one away. And Ohio State was able to get out of the jam. Along with Cedric Granger, Jay Cremata with you. Jordan Bowes producing our stream today. Big thanks to him putting up with us. As Ohio's Caitlin Fogue. At the plate, Torrey Walker on deck, Brooke Rice in the hole. 
and Lexi Handley in on a relief job for Ohio State. Deals a first pitch strike to Caitlin Fogg. It's nothing and one. Allison Smith got the start today for Ohio State. She went three and a third on three hits. She allowed one run. It was earned. Walked four, struck out two. Next pitch to Fogue. She pops it up behind home plate, and it goes out of play. Nothing in two to Fogue, who's 0 for 2 today. Strikeout and a flyout to first. Fogue steps back in. Righty on lefty matchup here is Henley. The lefty out of the pen. 0-2, outside, ball one. Now the stadium lighting here at OSF, our main source of light. Sun has set off the banks of the Hawking. Slight overcast here in Athens. Still cool enough, I mean, warm enough. Get away with a short sleeve shirt, but it is cooling off as Fogue chases upstairs. She's down on strikes. And that is Lexi Handley's second K since coming in. Tori Walker at the plate, one for one with an RBI double back in the fourth. She walked as well today. First pitch of the at-bat. Swing and a miss. Nothing in one. Ohio's lone run today. Came from Tory Walker, RBI uh, double to score. Tory O'Brien, pinch runner, who was put at second base after Sophia Bernard's leadoff double back in the fourth. Ball one thrown upstairs. And Ohio State's. They got on top back in the second. Leadoff double. Hit uh, McKenzie Bump all the way around. Then a two-run home run by Sam Hackenbrock. Popped her up. Middle of the infield, the shortstop. Carter cracks, makes the catch. Out number two for Ohio. And then the Buckeyes in the sixth. Back-to-back leadoff bunt singles. And a single by Melina Wilkinson. Brought both runners home with two outs. But Wilkinson was thrown out at third, trying to stretch that, uh, that double, we'll call it, into a triple. Brooke Rice at the plate, first pitch to her, high and wide, ball one. Crowd has stayed, which is awesome to see. Brooke Rice takes a strike high and, wide, uh, high and uh, outside. Pop out to first, walk back in the fourth. It's been Brooke Rice's day today. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Outside, high, 2-1. and one. The 2-1 two, deal. Low and outside. Bobcats went in order back in the fifth. Lexi Handley has done a fantastic job for Ohio State out of the bullpen. She's retired seven straight. Brooke Rice swings through a pitch upstairs. Full count, payoff pitch coming up. 5-1 game, Ohio State on top of Ohio. Bottom of the sixth. Full count, the payoff pitch. Ball four, up and in. Inning continues. And Lexi Handley's first walk today, too. Yep, she shows she is human right there um, with the walk. Uh, and this keeps Ohio alive in this inning. They need to get something going here at the bottom of the sixth. Yasmin Logan, 5'5", five, five, sophomore. Pittsburgh native steps in. Two outs, runner on first. Four-run deficit for Ohio down to Ohio State, 5-1. to one, And Logan takes a first pitch strike, nothing in one. Last year, Logan played in 24 games, got three starts. And this year, she's seeing a more consistent role. 241 hitter. Next pitch, another strike. 
Oh, and two quickly to the, to the sophomore. The 0-2 pitch, too high. Sent Pack out of the out of the crouch behind home plate. There was that rise ball in that sort of key situation, as I always talk about, that uh, Ohio State pitchers really love to do. Uh, but that time, Yasmin, she showed the discipline not to fall for it. The 1-2 pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Logan's down on strikes, and Hanley's third today. She has retired all but one batter she has faced today. So far out of the pen. Ohio State 5, Ohio 1. Uh, I should say the Buckeyes grab the bats when we come back on the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero when you first tasted what a burger should be like. Two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. At People's Bank, our vision is to be the best community bank in America. We focus on building relationships with our clients and offering cutting edge financial products. People's Bank is proud to support the local communities in which we work and live. This is Ashley Brown, People's Bank Vice President and Regional Manager, and we would love a chance to earn your business. People's Bank, working together, building success. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We head to the seventh at OSF. 5-1, Ohio State leads Ohio. Back with Cedric Granger, I'm Jay Cremata. Jordan Bowes producing our stream today as Ohio State's top of the order due up here in the seventh. J.C. Roberti, Meg Yachty, and Sam Hackenbrock at the plate, or due up this inning. As Roberti's first pitch over the plate for strike one. Nothing one to start for Roberti. 0 for 3 today, reached on an error her last time up in the fifth. Fly out and fielder's choice as well today. As Mackenzie Cole for Ohio, the next pitch is a swung through strike, nothing in two. Boy, we've been complimenting this crowd and just gushing to you about everyone showing up and showing the support. I knew, as it was announced during the break, a new Ohio softball field record, 1,009 people came today. A bloop over to the left, uh, third base dugout out of play, nothing in two still to count. 1,009, Cedric, that's a lot of people. That really is a lot of people, and you can tell if you got people sitting out of the dugout and just the amount of noise that goes on whenever anything happens in the game. It's very impressive, and I think as a whole, Ohio has done a great job of really getting these uh, students out to these events. It really uh, shows to what uh, Jacob Rockoff and the other people are doing uh, to be able to get uh, more people to come to the Bobcats games, and I think a lot of it um, stems from not being able to be here uh, last year for a lot of us, um, especially people in the freshman class or in the sophomore class uh, who went through all the pandemic times and weren't even allowed to go attend events uh, at our own college campus to be able to attend uh, sporting events, especially in the nice spring weather. Um, and then, of course, against big time competition like top 25 Ohio State, in-state rival. Uh, no wonder they were able to bring in so many people. But really, we like to appreciate all of Bobcat Nation, all of Buckeye Nation, as well as all the people that are joining us on the stream. Roberti flew out to center field a moment ago. So one down for Ohio State and Meggie Adi at the plate. And first pitch to her was a ball. Second pitch in there for a strike, one and one. Adi, one for two today. Bloop out to third. Back in the fifth and a fantastic play by Paoli. Over the guardrail, the third base dugout. Next pitch low and outside for ball two. A double back in the third and a run scored after uh, Sam Hackenbrock homered back in the third. And then Adi walked back in the first inning. Two ones to count, one out. Nobody on for OSU, leading Ohio 5-1 to one in the top of the seventh. The pitch is hit high in the air, left side, but foul. Two and two the count. 
as Adi. In 294 down in Tampa during their spring break trip. 257 hitter coming into today. The pitch to her swung on and hit high, deep into right center field. This ball is gone. And Ohio State just making it that much harder here in the top of the seventh, or yeah, seventh, with Maggie Otte's fourth home run of the year. Second home run of the day, two for Ohio State. And it was by the woman coming up to the plate, Sam Hackenbrock. One for three today with that home run. It was her eighth of the year. Yep. Coach Shanley's got to love what she's seeing, uh, being able to get more extra base hits. And uh, the best one in the culmination of all the extra base hits is the home run. And you were able to see that one right there as the Buckeyes try to ice this game away. She hits a hard roller to short. McMenemy gloves and throws out Hackenbrock on the 6-3 put out. So two outs now for Ohio State. Nikki Carver to the plate, 0-3 today. Fly out to left, ground out to third, and a ground out to first. And might look like we have a pinch hitter here. Yes, it will be. It looks like Avery Clark, yep. the junior out of Prospect, Ohio. Avery Clark in for Nikki Carver the first baseman. <laughs> Avery Clark, a right-hander who this year, 11 hits. Hitting 220. Cole sets, deals. It's turned on foul. And almost hit Coach Shanley down the third baseline. So if you're Nikki Carver, you finish today offensively 0 for 3. Two outs for Ohio State. Nobody on. Five run game. Ohio State 6, Ohio 1. Top half of the seventh. Another Yank foul down the third base line. Nothing in two. Gonna be a steep hill to climb for Ohio. Down five runs. Here's the 0-2, high and wide. Well, Jake, they were able to overcome a 7-1 deficit at one point this year um, against their rivals, Marshall, from across the border. Uh, that was probably their biggest comeback of the year. Um, they'll try to be able to pull off something similar here. And all it takes is really one run uh, to be able to start getting things going and to be able to start getting things rolling. So we'll see what happens. But it all starts with uh, OU being able to get out of this. But that's easier said than done against this Buckeye squad that's starting to really pick up some momentum as they got two runs last inning, and now they already have one in this one. Pitch low. The count is 2-2 two and two to Clark. Here it comes. Hit back to Cole at the circle. She makes the catch for out number three. That ends the top half of the seventh. Bobcats down five to Ohio State after the solo shot by Meggie Adi. 6-1 deficit for the Bobcats. It's all up to this. Home half of the seventh coming up next on the Ohio Sports Network from Learfield. These days we're all doing a lot more virtually, which is why at Ohio Health, we've expanded our virtual care options and availability to make it even easier to get safe expert care at home. That includes virtual visits with over a thousand trusted providers in every medical specialty. Learn more about our virtual health options at ohiohealth.com slash virtual health.
Let's go Cats. Let's go Labatt Blue Light. When you drink a pristine Canadian Pilsner, you're good at beer. Bobcats fans, grab a Labatt Blue Light and be good at beer. Always enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2021 Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All rights reserved. Labatt, registered U.S. trademark of Labatt Brewing Company, LTD. Home half of the seventh coming up. Ohio State six, Ohio one. Bobcats with some work to do. Nine one two batters do up this inning. Lauren Newhouse, Carolyn Spachek, Megan McMenemy all do up this inning. And uh, this is the group to do it, Cedric. This is uh, the Bobcats have uh, three capable batters of starting a rally. Yeah, they certainly are. And of course, uh, McMenemy, this is a big spot. Uh, getting to be able to do that and a bit to be able to be due up uh, against their team. Um, it's a guarantee that you'll at least be at bat one more time. So I'm sure she'll be thankful for that opportunity. But it all starts with Juhas here, and we'll see if uh, the Bobcats can avoid a uh, hole that they've been able to get into in a lot of these innings, which has been uh, two up, two out. First pitch to Juhas upstairs for ball one. Juhas 0 for 2 today, lined out to left, struck out swinging back in the fourth. Ohio down five to Ohio State. The 1-0. Swing and a miss. One and one. I mean, you look at Juhas hitting 292 this year. Spot check is a 310 hitter. So is McMenemy. So you have three capable hitters of starting something for Ohio. But Juhas looks outside for strike two. Right-hander steps back in. Lexi Hanley's been awesome today for Ohio State, only allowing one base runner. The pitch. Check that upstairs. And Pack threw down to first base. <laughs> for whatever reason, I don't know, but they appealed on the first base bag, and Juhas did not go. Maybe because Pack thought that Juhas went around and they were going to throw around the diamond. But all right. Yeah, why not? Worth a try. Yeah. Hanley's ready inside the circle, the 2-2. Hit on the ground to short. Quarter cracks there, juggles, recovers, throws to first, got her in time. Juhas motored on the first baseline, but uh, quarter cracks was able to get her on the 6-3 put out by a literal half step. Spachek returns to, to the dish, 0 for 3 today, strikeout, two flyouts to left and center field. And Spachek, who's been one of the bright spots for Ohio's offense, the Beaumont, Texas native, 5'6'' senior. First pitch to her, high and outside for ball one. Still, Last, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, still no hits given up by Allison Smith. Or by, uh, sorry, I apologize for that, Lexi Hanley. Uh, and she's just been exceptional. It's like, um, again, you start off with a tough opponent, Allison Smith, and then in the back, it's almost like a final boss of a video game as you work your way through the first level, and then now you get to the final boss, and it seems like the Bobcats have not really had an answer to her. Swing through and miss for Spachek on the off-speed pitch. One ball, one strike, one out, nobody on for Ohio, home half of the seventh. Bobcats trail by five. They're down to their last two outs. The pitch to Spachek. Hit in the air to right, but hooking foul. One and two now to Spachek. And Spachek did return to Beaumont, Texas with her team in a tournament hosted by Lamar University. It's a fun little tournament for Spachek. Get to go home, see family and friends. The one, two, swing and a miss, strike three. Well, so I'm sure it definitely means a lot to be able to have all your fans in the crowd and uh, being able to have your friends, your family, and all those important people uh, go and show up for you. But, yeah, that was the Cardinal Classic. I always love the names of the songs, uh, Jake, or names of the uh, tournaments here, uh, Jake. Uh, Cardinal Classic, Hilltopper, Spring Fling, Bulldog Classic, Bluegrass Classic. I mean, those are some pretty fun tournaments uh, to be playing at. So the Ohio State Buckeyes weren't the only ones who had a pretty fun spring break. Lexi Hanley now over 100 strikeouts this year as McMenemy lines one to left center field, diving and making the catches out of into center field. And ball game. Ohio falls to Ohio State 6-1. to one. And the Bobcats 
Drop to 7-15 as Ohio State improves to 18-5. Bobcats go in order, 1-2-3 in the seventh, and Lexi Handley shuts the door on Ohio, only allowing one base runner. It was a walk back in the sixth inning. And uh, you take a look at it, though, Cedric. I mean, still a fantastic effort by Ohio. That fourth inning, bases loaded, one out. That was their chance to really put a mark and uh, put a lot more runs on the board here tonight. Yeah, they'll definitely look back in film session and look back on that at bat with a little bit of remorse, a little bit of regret, but most importantly, the ability to be able to learn. And I feel like that's what Ohio is going to be able to take away. Uh, you're going to have some more Mac games coming up. Uh, so this game outside and against a tough, con uh, tough opponent in Ohio State is really going to help them to be able to be a lot better going into Mac play. They're going to be playing uh, Bowling Green, and they're going to be able to stay uh, here at home at uh, OSF. Uh, so hopefully that can be able to help them keep momentum for their sake. And for the Buckeyes, they finally get to be home at their next game. I'm sure they've waited a long time to be able to say that. Uh, they had a pretty big faithful come into town uh, for this, as you can see a lot of the people in Scarlet doing the OHIO chant uh, with them. Uh, but for both teams, there's a lot of takeaways, a lot of things that they can be able to watch film on and a lot of things they can improve because the ultimate goal is being able to do well in your conference so then you can be able to get a berth into the NCAA tournament. Like Cedric said, Ohio softball back on the air, back at OSF this weekend. Ohio hosts Bowling Green, a one game on Friday, doubleheader Saturday. We'll be on the air too, 10 minutes prior before first pitch Friday and also on Saturday. Uh, Cedric, thanks so much for your work, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, for Cedric Granger and also Jordan Bose, who is turning the dials for us, producing our stream, my name's Jay Cremato, repeating tonight's unhappy final, Ohio State 6, Ohio 1. We'll talk to you this upcoming weekend when the Falcons from Bowling Green come to OSF for Mid-American Conference action. That's it. So long from Athens. We'll talk to you this weekend, and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Talk this weekend. Thanks so much for listening in.